Let's get ready to mortgage. He is the prince of programs, guru of guidelines, master of matrixes. He puts the fun in funding. Please welcome Mark, Mr. Mortgage, I tell. All right. My name is Mark Itell and you are listening to the Mr. Mortgage Show and friends, you are in the right place if you are scratching your head, screaming at the TV and wondering what is going on with the real estate and mortgage market. What's happening? Right? We're zigging, we're zagging, we're up, we're down. What's that old uh, interest rates up in the stock market's down? You only get mugged if you go downtown. Well, clearly I'm not a singer. Hey, guys, but fun fact, I do play the drums in a, a 70s rock band, so, but they don't give me a microphone. Anyway, not to get sidetracked, but you're in the right place if you want the data, the tips, the tricks, the strategies, all the information that you need so you can go out there and make better real estate and mortgage decisions for you and your family. I am joined, as always, by my lovely producer, Jennifer, who is womaning the Anytime Hotline. She'll get your questions or comments on the air. You can reach out to Jen by calling or texting 855-462-7292. That's 855-462-7292. That is the Anytime Hotline, 855-462-7292. And again, you can call or text that number. If you prefer to shoot us an email, just check out MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. Scroll to the bottom of the page. There you'll find an email icon. Click on that icon and you can shoot your questions over to Jen via email. But hey, but before we get started, uh, I want to throw it over to Jen because she's already running around back there. What's going on, Jen? What, how you feeling? Feels like we're in for a really great show today. Yeah, it does, right? We've got a buzz in the air, if you will. So, man, one thing that was interesting this week, and I'll dive into the data here in a minute, but what a great response, if you will, to one particular caller last week, Lisa. And if you missed last week's episode, check out MrMortgageRadio.com and click on that very top link. After we're off the air, Jen takes the recorded version of the radio show, and posts it up there as a podcast episode. But super interesting um, response to Lisa's question. And let me do a quick recap in case you weren't listening last week. But Lisa is a first-time buyer and last year was all ready to go and chose to sit out the market. She was convinced that you know rates were going to go up or down, who knows, and that the market was going to come back down, the home prices. And she was very frustrated to find out that a year later, home prices are more expensive and interest rates are almost double. So that's a big double whammy. And, you know, I gave her my honest assessment, you know, what the right next move should be if it was me and what I would do. And because of that, I had a lot of people reach out who were in a similar circumstance and I had no idea how many people were, you know, head faked, if you will, by all the news last year, this time that said the market was going to crash. And man, that drives me nuts um, because almost all the time, those are emotional conversations. People are frustrated with where the market is. So they're saying it's got to crash, right? We hear whatever goes up must come back down and I get it, right? I get it. But if you're really having that conversation, you need to be looking at the data. And Lisa's example was, you know, evident of that because somebody convinced her to wait last year and in her price range, let's say I used 300,000 as an example, she's paying 20 or $30,000 more for that property this year, but she's borrowing at twice the interest rate. So that payment is significantly more. So not only did she cost herself a big lump of equity by waiting, she also is costing herself significantly more every month to own that property. So it was interesting. I didn't realize how many people had been kind of hoodwinked by the news um, and friends and family and, you know, other people. I just caution you to pay attention to who you're listening to. You know, if you're having trouble in your marriage, you're not going to go ask your 40 year old buddy who's a bachelor, who's never been married, never been in a relationship longer than six months, wears joggers, white Adidas and bathes himself in Axe body spray with a, you know, a one direction concert t-shirt on. 
that's not the guy to seek marriage advice from. And I'm laughing because I just got a mental picture. I don't know where all that came from. But my point is you don't ask anyone other than a cowboy how to ride a horse. And if you're seeking advice from your inner circle and none of them own real estate, well, you're not going to get the best advice. And um, I'm just sharing that only because, as I mentioned, there were quite a few conversations around that. And it made me aware that, you know, a lot of people were, were given bad advice last year. And I'm, listen, I'm not a soothsayer. I don't have a crystal ball. I just look at the data. And, you know, oftentimes the data will give you the clear, the clear answer, right? We talk about it here in, in my office all the time, data-driven solutions. You know, I say also logic and emotion can't run the same brain at the same time. And if you're getting emotional about a decision, you need to step back and really evaluate it from the data standpoint. It sounds like Lisa is moving forward and going to make that decision and become a homeowner, which is awesome. And if you're in that same circumstance and you want to have a discussion regarding some of the options and, you know, the, the if this, then that type of scenarios, what ifs, if you will, I'm happy to spend some time with you. Just give us a call and we'll set something up off the air and we can take all the time you need to get you comfortable with what options are out there. We talked about a lot of things last week. We talked about me eating a bacon sandwich and wearing dresses, and I was going to kind of try to adopt that. Hey, Jen, can you imagine me uh, walking into the office every day in a dress, eating a bacon sandwich? Oh, no, Mark. (laughs) I know. I couldn't resist. But if you missed last week's show, we talked about that. A lot of good stuff. But uh, yeah, it was an interesting week. All, All in all, an interesting week. We're seeing the inflation pressures are really what's driving interest rates at the moment. I, you know, I, I attempted some Hank Williams Jr. there at the opening of the show with, with my, with my rendition of country boy can survive, but yeah, the stock market's been down. Interest rates have have gone back up a bit. It's an interesting time in, in the world of real estate, but again, super fascinated by how much pent up demand appears to be in the market. So Guys, questions or comments, 855-462-7292. The big news of the week really can't, comes down to inflation. You know, that's, that's what everybody's watching. The minutes released this week from the Federal Reserve indicate that, you know, they're rolling up their sleeves and they're going to continue to swing at this, uh, this inflation monster. You know, it's like a Rocky Balboa movie. You know, inflation is back down in the corner and the Fed's just unleashing on him and his eyes swollen shut and inflation's yelling, yo, Adrian. And then it starts battling back. And that's what we're seeing happen. So the interest rate movement is, is a direct, has a direct correlation with the inflation outlook because the fear in the market is that there are significant rate hikes to come because inflation does not appear to be under control at the moment. So we're watching that. But guys, again, inflation interest rates, that's not what controls home prices or any prices. It's supply v demand. We talk about it all the time. And what we're seeing in the market right now is still significantly more demand than supply. And we've talked about it a lot, and I'm happy to dive deep into that if you've got questions around it. But watch supply and demand. Watch days on market. That's the real indicator of what's going on. So anyway, guys, you hear the music. You know what that means. That is my cue. We'll be back in a few. Sit tight on the other side of this break. We're going to dive into more of the data. But more importantly, take your questions. We'll be right back with more of the Mr. Mortgage Show. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show, and I'm going to interrupt this commercial break to ask you for a favor. If you have any friends or family or coworkers who are thinking of buying or selling or refinancing real estate, I'm hoping I can count on you to introduce them to me, to the team, to the show. We'd love to help them any way we can. Just simply share the link, MrMortgageRadio.com, MrMortgageRadio.com. Again, it's Mark Itell, NMLS 1929005. Now, back to the commercials. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com. www.reallygreatagents.com. Here's another five-star review. 
We started our loan with a different company. They said we were approved, but at the last minute they told us there was a problem. I still don't know what went wrong, but thankfully our real estate agent told us about Mark. I was pretty stressed, but it's the perfect house so we gave Mark a shot. He got it done. I'm not sure what was different but I don't really care. We even got a better interest rate and with less money out of pocket than the first guy quoted us. It was a great surprise. Yes, I'm happy to recommend Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team. Hey, it's Mark Itell here, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. And you've heard me talk about the valuation tool that we use in our lending practice almost daily. It's not quite an appraisal, but it's way more accurate than one of those online estimates. And we're happy to run one of those reports for you at no charge. Just visit freevaluereport.org. That's freevaluereport.org. Give us a little information about the property and we'll be happy to send you your report. That's freevaluereport.org. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, Do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com www.moreaboutreverse.com Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now at 855-462-7292. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell, and you are listening to the Mr. Mortgage Show. And if you've got questions, you can call or text the Anytime Hotline. That number is 855-462-7292. That's 855 855- Four six two seven two nine two. Jen is womaning the hotline, and she'll get you on the air. Again, that's eight five five four six two seven two nine two. Or check out mrmortgageradio.com. Scroll to the bottom of the page, click on the email icon, and you can shoot your questions that way too. That's uh, mrmortgageradio.com. But yeah, leading into that break, we were kind of just summarizing the week. The inflation numbers, the inflation indicators, the Fed's projected reaction to inflation is what's really pushing things interest rate wise. Now, we talk about it all the time. You know, supply and demand control prices, inflation is what's pushing interest rates. So those are the two big moving parts, if you will supply and demand uh, control, home values and home prices. And then inflation, once inflation gets under control, then the Fed can take his foot off the gas. But right now he's still, he's still pushing on that gas pedal. But anyway, I don't know why I got country there for the gas pedal. I just uh, envisioned a, an old 1970s F-100 going flying down a dirt road in the Federal Reserve chair, Jerome Powell, drinking a Budweiser and smoking an unfiltered uh, lucky strike. <laughs> trying to t- Anyway, guys, clearly, uh, clearly I'm caffeinated today. So let's throw uh, the mic over to Jen and get your questions uh, on the air. Maybe that'll settle me down. Hey, Jen, what do we have question wise? Elvin is asking, my mother recently died and left her house to me and my two sisters. Can I get a mortgage to buy them out? It's currently still in the estate. Thank you in advance. Hey, Elvin. Man, thanks for that. And um, I'm sorry to hear about your mom. I, condolences uh, to you and your sisters. And uh, yeah, that's, I. anyway, I, I, that can't be easy. So just uh, just know that we're thinking about you. But thank you for your question. And we do it all the time. This is not an uncommon circumstance. So to answer your question, yes, you can do this. What may be the easiest way to do it is if you just buy it from the estate and whatever your equity position is, your percentage of ownership can become your quote unquote gift of equity. So to use round numbers, let's assume for a minute there is no mortgage against the property and there are no encumbrances and that the property is worth $300,000 and that the three of you have equal ownership interest, right? So you each own a third of the property. In that instance, you could use your one third as an equity position and just take out a mortgage to pay your sisters off. So you'd basically be 
It'd be like you're buying it from the estate and the estate is gifting you 33% equity and then you're b- taking a mortgage to buy your sisters out. But to answer your question, yes, it's uh, it's easy to do. We do it all the time. There is some protocol you want to follow, you know, certain steps you need to take. It's it's already in the, the estate, which is awesome, but don't transfer it out of the estate into any one of your names until you have a discussion about how to set this up properly so that it's easy from the mortgage standpoint, because the probate attorney and the mortgage standpoint aren't always seeing eye to eye. And that's not to insinuate that one is right and one is wrong. There's just different protocol necessary to be followed if you're buying a property versus refining a property versus buying it from an estate versus buying it from your sister's all of that can influence what the proper steps for the mortgage or the most advantageous steps from the mortgage standpoint are. So I welcome the opportunity to help you. If you want some information about it, we can have a discussion off the air and I'll walk you through exactly how to do that. So, and I guess guys, let me throw that out there. I always forget to, to mention this because I have so much fun doing the show. I forget to remind everybody that in addition to this being a radio show and a lot of fun for me and hopefully fun for you, we actually run a mortgage brokerage. And if you can hear me, we can help you in your market. So I welcome the opportunity to jump in and help anybody who needs um, you know, any mortgage or real estate related services. We're part of the Really Great Agent Network. We can get you in touch with the very best agents in your area, regardless of who they work for. And uh, we can certainly help you with your mortgage needs through our practice directly. But great question, brother. I'm sorry that you're going through that. But uh, yeah, you can definitely do what you want to do as far as purchasing the property and refining your sisters out. So great question. Hey, Jen, do we have another one? Gary wants to know, can I get a mortgage on a double wide? It's on five acres and it's in pretty good shape. I'm just wondering if a manufactured home needs a special type of loan. Hey, I like that. Manufactured home needs a special type of loan. (laughs) Hey, Gary, I guess that's where that mental image of Jerome Powell driving an old F-100 down a dirt road with a Doral and a, uh, I'm sorry, a Lucky Strike and a Budweiser (laughs) between his knees. Anyway, great, great question. Um, And man, oh man, with where home values have gone, it is wild to see what the manufactured homes are going for now. And we did a transaction not too long ago on a double wide manufactured home. It was, I don't know, probably five or six years old. It was a fairly new unit. Wow. It was amazing. I was looking at the the pictures in the appraisal and what a beautiful, beautiful home. So certainly not the old um, Lucky Strike uh, Budweiser uh, visions of the old days. But to answer your question, yes. Here, there's a couple of caveats around financing a manufactured home that you need to consider. And the first is you're buying the uh, unit and the lot, the dirt. You own the dirt because then they're deeded as one. It's deeded as real property and you can use a regular mortgage, right? And by regular, I mean FHA, VA, conventional, all the mortgage products are available to you. Now, the other caveat is the age. And I say 1977 or newer because I like to play it safe. It's technically the summer of 1976 or newer. There were some manufacturing changes made in the summer of 1976 that made them better built units. So that is the other caveat, the age and then the uh, land ownership as well, and that it's deeded as real property. To answer your question, yes, you can use a variety of loan products to buy a manufactured home. And where it got super confusing was during COVID, they put overlays in place limiting some loan products. And for some reason, manufactured homes were limited there for a while and single wides in particular, but all of the overlays, at least with our practice have been lifted now for, I don't know, year, year and a half. And we've been funding manufactured homes with everything from conventional to FHA, VA and USDA. So brilliant question, my man. Congratulations. I love the idea of having five acres. That's awesome. A little bit of land to roam, but uh, great question. I appreciate you sending it our way. And if you need help, you know, you can reach out to us 855-462-7292. We'll be happy to jump on a call and see if we can't help you with that. But uh, hey guys, you hear the music, you know what that means. That is my cue. We'll be back in a few. Sit tight on the other side of this break. We'll be back with more of the Mr. Mortgage Show, but more importantly, more of your questions. Sit tight. We'll be right back. 
Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of The Mr. Mortgage Show, and I'm going to interrupt this commercial break to ask you for a favor. If you have any friends or family or coworkers who are thinking of buying or selling or refinancing real estate, I'm hoping I can count on you to introduce them to me, to the team, to the show. We'd love to help them any way we can. Just simply share the link, MrMortgageRadio.com, MrMortgageRadio.com. Again, it's Mark Itell, NMLS 1929005. Now, back to the commercials. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com. www.reallygreatagents.com. Here's another five-star review. We kept our business above water with credit cards during the pandemic. I'm glad we did. Business is better than ever. But I didn't want to be a slave to those credit card payments. I called Mark about the REC loan he advertises. Long story short, we did a REC refinance and paid off everything, even the car. Now we only have the mortgage payment. We're saving a bunch every month. Yes, we are happy to recommend Mark and the Mr. Mortgage team. Hey, it's Mark Itell here, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. And you've heard me talk about the valuation tool that we use in our lending practice almost daily. It's not quite an appraisal, but it's way more accurate than one of those online estimates. And we're happy to run one of those reports for you at no charge. Just visit freevaluereport.org. That's freevaluereport.org. Give us a little information about the property and we'll be happy to send you your report. That's freevaluereport.org. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, Do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now at 855-462-7292. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell, and you are listening to the Mr. Mortgage Show. And friends, you are in the right place if you've got questions and you want answers, you want the data, the tips, the tricks, the strategies, all the information so you can make better real estate and mortgage decisions for you and your family. We do this every week right here, same time, same station. And Jen, my producer, and I are uh, certainly honored that you chose to spend a little bit of your day with us. We greatly appreciate your time. And if you've got questions or comments, just shoot them over to Jen via text or give her a call at 855-462-7292. That's 855-462-7292. She'll get you on the air. If you prefer to do it via email, just check out MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. Scroll to the bottom of the page, click the email icon, and shoot her over your thoughts via email. That would be awesome. So, man, we've had some some fun so far, right? We talked about me wearing dresses and eating bacon sandwiches and Jerome Powell smoking a Lucky Strike and drinking a Budweiser while he's driving an F-150 down a dirt road. And if you missed any of that and you want to know what the heck I'm talking about, Check out MrMortgageRadio.com. Click on the podcast link. Once we get done on the air, Jen posts the recorded version of the show up to the podcast page. So you'll have to tune into the podcast to find out what fun you've missed so far. Hey, but speaking of Jen and your questions, I'm going to toss it her way for another question. What do we have, Jen? Angie sent this one. Is it true that condos are getting more difficult to finance? We are getting ready to sell and we are a little worried about this. Hey, Angie, that is a brilliant, brilliant question. And kudos to you for being aware of what's happening, because as a seller, most people don't even think about the financing side of things. So, um, yeah, great, great, great job for looking deep on that one. But to answer your question, so what's happening is condos are being scrutinized a little more heavily. Remember a year or so ago, that condo building in Surfside, which is down in southeast Florida, 
down in uh, Miami-Dade County collapsed, and all indications at the moment look like it was because of deferred maintenance. Now, this was always part of um, the process when you're financing condos. We always did a questionnaire, right? The condo questionnaire, which in that questionnaire, the lenders evaluating things like the budget, deferred maintenance, the number of units owned by any single inv- investor, all of that has always been evaluated. Now, where it's getting a little more scrutiny of late is things like deferred maintenance, budgetary items for future replacement of, you know, roofs or, you know, rust mitigation for high-rise condos. A lot of these items are being looked at more closely, but the big one is reserves. So if 10% of the budget's not going into reserves, then the fear is that the association is not adequately funded for future maintenance issues. And because of that, the condo will be classed as non-warrantable, which means that fewer loan options are available to a buyer of your condo. And typically what it means is they've got to put a bigger down payment down and they pay a higher interest rate, which may deter some buyers from wanting to buy your unit. So all of that being said, if your association passes the condo questionnaire and the, the project is deemed warrantable, then there is a wide variety of mortgage options available. So if you want more information regarding your specific building, give me a call or shoot me an email and I'll do my best to uncover some information to see at very least if it's been on somebody's warrantable approved list that might give you an indication that there is adequate uh, funding available for potential buyers. So great, great question though. I got to commend you for considering that because I know a lot of people don't. So I appreciate that. And as always, if you need more info, just reach out. I'm happy to help if I can. Hey, Jen, do we have another question? Tammy has a question. Can we get financing on a boat slip? We live in a neighborhood with a marina and a slip just became available. Thanks. Hey, Tammy, that is a great, great question. And yes, you can finance a marina slip, a boat slip. Not very many banks or institutions will fund them. A lot of times it's a local bank or a local credit union. But yes, um, oftentimes they're deeded as real property. And oftentimes they're managed by an association, right? Instead of a homeowner's association, there's a marina owner's association. But to answer your question, yes, you can get financing on a boat slip. You can get financing on a RV pad. And there are a lot of these in Florida, right? There are high-end RV parks where people roll in with the million-dollar Prevo bus and they back down and boom, the ocean is right in their backyard. I'm thinking of a couple down in the Keys where you're buying, you know, like a 25-foot sliver of property with a pad and maybe a... Uh, what do you call it? A um, a pergola? Is that right, Jen? A pergola? Okay, yeah, a pergola or maybe a little enclosure, a tiki bar, if you will. But basically, it's a parking space for your bus, and those are trading, or you know, three hundred thousand dollars in some instances. So yes, you can finance uh, a boat slip under a very similar program as the RV spaces, and Florida is notorious for both of those. Oftentimes, the term is twenty years not a full 30 years like a mortgage. Sometimes it might be 10 or 15, and you'll most likely be dealing directly with a local bank or credit union. But yes, to answer your question, that is a doable deal. But yeah, super cool question, and uh, do it if you can. I know in some instances, you can rent those slips for quite a profit, especially if you're close to an inlet. I'm thinking of a neighborhood down in Jupiter, Florida, where you can see the ocean from the marina, and I know those slips are commanding a pretty penny, and the big slips especially. You know, those guys running big 72 and closed bridge Vikings, uh, they're already pointing <laughs> they're already pointing them east at the at the inlet and uh, they're paying a pretty penny to be docked in that location so great great question we don't get many of those the same with the rv lots that's one that goes unmentioned a lot and it's interesting because as the airbnb explosion was happening during the pandemic i saw a bunch of listings for RVs and boats on Airbnb. And I found it pretty interesting and and quite industrious, actually, for somebody to think about that. You know, their RV is parked on the side of their house and now suddenly it's an Airbnb generating income. So 
I haven't stayed in any RV or yacht Airbnbs. If you have, I'd love to know your thoughts on it, but I thought it was super cool. I started to surf around on Airbnb and I don't, what's the other one? Verbo, I think it's called. I might, I might have that one wrong, but super, super interesting concept. And I appreciate your question. I hope that helps. Again, if you need more information, just reach out. I'll do my very best to get you in touch with somebody that can help. So thank you for that. That was a good, good question. And also too, if you've stayed in an RV or a boat as an Airbnb guest, I'd love to know what your thoughts are on that too. And if you enjoyed the experience. So anyway, you hear the music, you know what that means. That is my cue. We'll be back in a few. Sit tight on the other side of this short commercial break. We'll be back with more of the Mr. Mortgage Show. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show, and I'm going to interrupt this commercial break to ask you for a favor. If you have any friends or family or coworkers who are thinking of buying or selling or refinancing real estate, I'm hoping I can count on you to introduce them to me, to the team, to the show. We'd love to help them any way we can. Just simply share the link, MrMortgageRadio.com, MrMortgageRadio.com. Again, it's Mark Itell, NMLS 1929005. Now, back to the commercials. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com. www.reallygreatagents.com. Here's another five-star review. As a realtor, I have a bunch of mortgage brokers to choose from, but I prefer to work with Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team. In this crazy market, there is no room for error, especially on the mortgage side. Mark's team moves fast, keeps everybody in the loop, and makes things happen. They always give my clients a great deal and take the time to walk them through every step of the process. When you're considering a lender, I encourage you to talk to Mark Itell and the Mr. Mortgage team. Hey, it's Mark Itell here, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. And you've heard me talk about the valuation tool that we use in our lending practice almost daily. It's not quite an appraisal, but it's way more accurate than one of those online estimates. And we're happy to run one of those reports for you at no charge. Just visit freevaluereport.org. That's freevaluereport.org. Give us a little information about the property and we'll be happy to send you your report. That's freevaluereport.org. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, Do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now at 855-462-7292. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell, and you are listening to the Mr. Mortgage Show. And guys, we do this each week right here, same time, same station. Super excited to be with you, and thank you. Thank you for spending a little bit of your day with us. We greatly appreciate you being here. So, hey, if you've got questions or comments, just call or text Jen at 855-462-7292. That's 855-462-7292. That is the Anytime Hotline. She'll get you on the air. Again, that number is 855-462-7292. Or shoot us an email by visiting MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. Scroll to the bottom of the page. Click the email icon and uh, you can shoot your questions over that way. But man, we had some great questions. I started uh, drifting off and thought about an Airbnb on a yacht or a um, luxury RV. And I find that truly fascinating. That was, it was at least an interesting conversation for me. So anyway, I love the questions that we've had so far today. So let me throw it over to Jen for another question. Hey, Jen, what do we have? Teresa is asking, how does rent to own situation work? My landlord is getting ready to sell my house and I'd like to buy it, but don't have the down payment yet. I'm thinking rent to own might work. 
Yeah, that is a great question. And assuming that your landlord is on board, that might be a great way to structure this. So normally what happens, there's a couple different ways to do it. So let's talk about a rent to own deal first. Normally in a rent to own, a portion of your monthly payment will go towards a future deposit or down payment, if you will. So let's use round numbers and say you pay a thousand dollars a month and your landlord will take a hundred dollars a month towards your down payment. So at the end of a year, you would have $1,200 towards a down payment at the end of two years, 2,400. And then after three years, you'd have $3,600 built up in a down payment account, if you will. And then at that point, you can execute your option to buy the property and you've already got a down payment from, you know, the, the rent that you've been paying. That's normally how it works. And all the parts of that are negotiable. And then, so you're, you're going to negotiate a monthly uh, rental rate and you're going to negotiate how much of that is applied to a future deposit. Then you're going to want to negotiate when you'll have the option to buy the property. And usually it's at the end of one year or the end of two or the end of three. I haven't seen it structured beyond three years in most cases. So that's a traditional rent to own scenario. A lease option is very similar, but you lease the property, You so you're essentially renting it, but you've negotiated a price to purchase it and a date to execute that option. And that can also be at the end of one year, two year, or three years. But with the lease option, you may not get that percentage of the down payment applied. Now, you can, as I mentioned, everything is negotiable, but one is Renting it with the option to buy and the other rent to own, if you will, is a portion of that rent payment is going towards your down payment. So kudos to you for being creative. And again, if you can get your landlord on board, that is an awesome, awesome opportunity. So I appreciate that. But hey, I'm going to throw it over to Jen for another question. Thomas sent this. I'm just starting to research options to buy my first home. I hear FHA are not good but the rate seems lower with FHA. What are the pros and cons of going the FHA route? Wow, wow, wow. So you've heard wrong, brother. FHA is an amazing, amazing, amazing loan program. And what happened during the pandemic was a lot of agents who had a misconception about FHA were taking the path of least resistance and saying, cash or conventional only, and then cash only. Well, guys, there's nothing wrong with an FHA loan. There's nothing wrong with an FHA buyer. And you just pointed it out. And today it's super noticeable, the difference in the interest rate. You know, it's nearly three quarters of a point better, five eighths of a point at least in looking at it yesterday, better to go FHA. So there are advantages to the buyer for going FHA, and there are not many disadvantages to the seller. Where some sellers were reluctant with FHA during the pandemic is if the property doesn't appraise, they can't force you to buy the property with an FHA loan because the FHA addendum clearly states if the property doesn't appraise, you can cancel the contract. That was probably the biggest reason why FHA offers got pushed to the side and got this weird negative connotation that they were bad loans. There is absolutely nothing wrong with the loan. The second thing is there's a misconception that it's difficult for the property to appraise. Well, again, that's wrong. It's the same appraisal methodology, the same comparable sales, the same value is going to be applied. Now, if there are exposed wires or a broken window or leaking roof, the appraiser might call out required repairs, but do you want to buy a property with a leaky roof, broken windows, and exposed wires anyway? So... Assuming that the seller is selling a habitable home that's in decent shape, there's absolutely no reason not to go FHA. Now, to answer your question, pros and cons, the biggest difference in an FHA loan and a conventional loan is the mortgage insurance component. So with an FHA loan, the mortgage insurance lives with that loan indefinitely. So until the loan's paid off, unless you put a gigantic down payment down, but you're not, most people aren't doing that with FHA. So with the FHA loan, if you pay the principal down or the property appreciates to the point that the principal amount of the loan is 78% or less of the value, 
you're still stuck with the mortgage insurance. With a conventional loan, when you reach that threshold, you can ask that the mortgage insurance be removed. Oftentimes, they'll reappraise the property and then they'll drop the mortgage insurance. But that's not until you get to a 78% or less loan to value. That is the number one difference in if you go conventional or uh, FHA is the mortgage insurance component. One can fall off once you reach a certain loan to value threshold. The other doesn't. But as you mentioned, if you're saving three quarters of a point or five eighths of a point, in going FHA, you're saving so much money each month. And that later date of dropping the MI is the unknown future. It's just, I don't know. I'm a fan of the FHA product. I'm a, fa- I'm a fan of the first time buyer. So I advocate for that. But yeah, I could not encourage you more to use the FHA loan, especially if that's all you qualify for. If you're qualified for a conventional loan, then just look at the hard costs. Look at what the out of pocket's going to be. Look at the interest rate and look at the monthly payment and then say, okay, at what point in the future am I going to hit that 80% or 78% threshold that's going to allow me to drop the mortgage insurance? Is that in year 11? Is it in year seven? Where is it? And then does it make sense to pay more each month to get there and drop the mortgage insurance automatically with conventional. So anyway, that is a brilliant, brilliant question. You can hear that I'm a little passionate about it because uh, FHA historically has been an amazing access to home ownership, and it, I just hate the fact that there's misconceptions around it. And if your agent is advising against it, get a new agent. I'll be happy to put you in touch with somebody who can work magic with FHA approvals. I've seen it done time and time and time again. So brilliant, brilliant question. I greatly appreciate that. I hope that helps. If you need more info, reach out. I'll be happy to jump in with you. But uh, hey, guys, you hear the music. You know what that means. That is my cue. Sit tight on the other side of this break. We'll be back with more of the Mr. Mortgage Show. We'll be right back. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com. www.reallygreatagents.com. Here's another five-star review. My wife and I own a small business. And the way our accountant file our taxes we don't show much income on tax returns. Because of this it looks as if we don't make the money. This was a problem for our bank when we applied for a mortgage. But not for Mark. He verifies our income by using our monthly bank statements. Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team made a big difference for me. Yes I am happy to recommend Mr. Mortgage Mark. Hey, it's Mark Itell here, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. And you've heard me talk about the valuation tool that we use in our lending practice almost daily. It's not quite an appraisal, but it's way more accurate than one of those online estimates. And we're happy to run one of those reports for you at no charge. Just visit freevaluereport.org. That's freevaluereport.org. Give us a little information about the property and we'll be happy to send you your report. That's freevaluereport.org. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, Do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now at 855-462-7292. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell, and you are listening to the Mr. Mortgage Show. And friends, you are in the right place if you've got questions and you want answers about real estate or mortgages. I'm laughing because every time I say that, I think of that movie, 
you want the truth, you can't handle the truth. <laughs> well, guys, you can handle the questions and you can handle the answers. We have a lot of fun here and do our very best to bring you the information and the data that you need so you can make better real estate and mortgage decisions for you and your family. And man, oh man, we've had some awesome, awesome questions so far today. I really appreciate the participation. You guys are bringing it today. So appreciate you for that. Again, 855-462-7292. Call or text that number. Jen will get you on the air or shoot us an email. You can do that by visiting MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. Scroll to the bottom of the page, click the email icon and shoot us your questions there and she'll get you on the air. So anyway, speaking of Jen, speaking of your questions, let's keep this thing going. Hey, Jen, what do we have question wise? Claudette is asking. So I've heard you explain the interest rate buy down strategy. I understand this, but I'm wondering if it makes more sense to pay a lower price now and refinance later. I'm curious to know what you think. Thanks. Love your show. Hey, Claudette. Thanks for that question. And I love that you love the show. Yeah, this is an interesting catch 22. We almost outsmart ourselves with this one because firstly, let me say lowering the interest rate moves the needle way more from a monthly payment standpoint than lowering the sales price. So if you're talking about, you know, 10 or $20,000 in a seller's contribution, that can work magic with an interest rate buy down versus lowering the purchase price by that same, you know, 10 or $20,000. You're not going to see that much savings. Now I totally, totally understand where you're coming from. It's logical. You're paying ten thousand, or tw- let's just use that example: ten or twenty thousand dollars more. So let's say you're, you know, you're buying a three hundred thousand dollar property, and the seller's willing to give you ten thousand dollars. Using that ten thousand dollars to buy your rate down is going to save you way more than paying two ninety for the property. But I get it. You've paid ten thousand dollars more for the property than you could have by giving them the two ninety. And refinancing it later, I understand that strategy, but refinancing is not free. We have an amazing strategic refi program in place. You're not going to get a cheaper refi from us without using the strategic refi. That being said, there are still costs associated with refinancing the loan that we have no control over. So you're not going to refinance for free there will be some costs associated with it. So you need to factor that into place versus that $10,000, right? And then here's the biggest, biggest thing that I I just want to throw out there. The future is unknown, right? I read an interesting article this week that said mortgage rates are on a round trip to 4%. Now, where they go before they come back down to 4%, nobody knows. Could it be 10? Could it be 8? The, the author didn't state any of that. Now, I personally don't think we're going to get down that low again. I think we're going to find a home somewhere in the fives. I've said that for years. That's just my gut. But again, I don't do the whole crystal ball tea leaf thing. That's just not my style. I like to look at the data that's in front of me. All of that being said, let's say you pay 290 instead of 300 and rates don't come back down. That refinance is not happening and you paid a higher interest rate for that period of time, at what point did you pay more for that property by paying a higher interest rate for less of a purchase price? Does that make sense? So I would just caution you to take the time to do that break-even analysis. 300000 at, you know, 5.75%. 290,000 at 6.75%. Where does that math work out that it makes more sense to do the interest rate buy down? And here's the thing, you may never have to refi. If you get a rate in the fives and, you know, rates go to seven or eight and stay there for years, then wow, you're that much farther ahead of the game. So the future of the interest rate market is unknown. And I know there are a lot of smart people out there telling us rates are going to come back down, but they're the very same smart people that told us last year that in 2022 rates weren't going to go higher than 3.75%. So just keep all that in mind, give that some consideration and do that math. If you need help with that, call me, we'll walk through it together. Uh, But don't outsmart yourself with this one. There's savings both ways. Just see which one makes more sense for you. But brilliant, brilliant question. I greatly appreciate that. And I hope that helped. Hey, Jen, do we have another question? Drew has a question. We started the process with your office for our rec refinance. We're paying off our equity line. 
credit cards, and one car loan. My question is, can we keep the equity line open? We want it just in case of emergency. Thanks. Daniela is awesome. We think so too. <laughs> yes, we do. Daniela is awesome. Hey, Drew, great question. And the, the answer is maybe. And I say maybe because your current equity line will have to resubordinate to the new first mortgage. And then the combined loan to value will need to meet the guidelines for that equity line. So um, a lot of times what people do is they just close that equity line out as part of the refinance and then go open another one with the bank if they feel like they need that uh, just in case. But I caution you, brother, just in case sometimes is super tempting when you see that jet ski on offer up pop up and it's a great price and you've wanted one for a long time and you've got that equity line burning a hole in your pocket. Yeah, let's talk offline because I'll pull your file up and see if there's enough equity in there to do it and then see if we can get your current uh, equity line holder to resubordinate. But just think about that before you go off and buy that new jet ski. But anyway, I'm, I'm just joking with you. Brilliant, brilliant question. And let me let me thank you for being um, now part of the Mr. Mortgage family for reaching out. And uh, and yeah, I'll tell Daniela that uh, you said she's awesome. She's a good one. We got an amazing team behind the scenes. And as I mentioned all the time, we'll be happy to help if we can. So and I do want to elaborate, guys, um, because Drew's speaking the Mr. Mortgage lingo. He said REC refi. The REC refi REC stands for reduce, eliminate, and consolidate. And if we can reduce your monthly payment or eliminate some debt or consolidate some debt, then you can qualify for the REC refi program. And there are some benefits to that. So if that just kind of jumped out at you with, you know, what, what what are they talking about? Wreck this, wreck that. Well, that's what we're talking about. Wreck those payments and uh, make one low monthly payment and get yourself back on track. So thanks for that, brother. Thanks for reaching out. Thanks for letting us be part of your journey. Hey, Jen, can we squeeze in one more question? Kevin sent this one. I'm self-employed. I make good money, but the income is sporadic. One month, there's a lot of income, and then a couple months with none. What are the mortgage options for someone like me? So, hey, Kevin, great question. Uh, first, if this is a normal pattern in your business, and one thing that jumped in my mind right off the bat, we see this a lot with contractors, right? You have a lot of expenditures at the beginning of the project, and then there's some big draws, and then there might be a month where there's nothing but expenditures, and then boom, another big lump of money comes in. As long as that's normal in how you operate your business and we can show that, we might be able to just use your tax returns and qualify you normally, right? For self-employed, we're usually looking at tax returns, year-to-date profit and loss and bank statements. If we can establish that this is a historic and normal pattern, then you may be fine with using your tax returns, full documentation, conventional financing. If for some reason that doesn't work or you're not claiming all of your income, you got an amazing accountant and you're writing off everything, then there are bank statement loans where they take the uh, averages of 12 or 24 months monthly deposits and use that as income. Now, when I say that, don't jump up and down and say, okay, well, I deposited $800,000 last year, so that's my qualifying income. There's a different uh, factor applied to each profession. So to use that contractor, the contractor has expenses in materials and labor, so that's not all income. So to answer your question, there's a good chance that if it's a normal established pattern of operating your business, then you could go full doc and get conventional financing. And if it's not, and you've got to go to the bank statement route, that may be available to you as well. And I'm happy to spend some time with you and go through the options and help you any way we can. Again, guys, remember, if you can hear my voice, we could be your choice. But hey, you hear the music, you know what that means? We have wrapped up another week of the Mr. Mortgage Show. Say bye, Jen. Bye, Jen. Have a wonderful week. Yes, everybody. Have a wonderful week. We will be here next week. Same time, same station. If you need us during the week, do not hesitate to call 855-462-7292, 855-462-7292, or check us out online at MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. Have a fantastic week, everybody. We'll see you here. Same time, same station.
That's a wrap. Join Mark Itell next week for more thrilling edge of your seat discussions about real estate and mortgages right here on the Mr. Mortgage Show. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show, and I'm going to interrupt this commercial break to ask you for a favor. If you have any friends or family or coworkers who are thinking of buying or selling or refinancing real estate, I'm hoping I can count on you to introduce them to me, to the team, to the show. We'd love to help them any way we can. Just simply share the link, MrMortgageRadio.com, MrMortgageRadio.com. Again, it's Mark Itell, NMLS 1929005. Now, back to the commercials.